Um, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this new day and for calling us together as your community in the world and for the world. We thank you for the gift of your son and his resurrection. We thank you for your presence in our lives and ask that you would encourage us and empower us and give us that peace that passes understanding in this time of change. Because they signed into the meeting. And all this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. No, no, you're not. Yeah, I didn't say Paul. So, um, it's good to see so many of you. Um, I miss you. Um, I, and I long for the time when we can be together. But I also know that God is wasting nothing. And that God wastes no time. Uh, and God is working in our lives and for the life of the world, even now, even though we can't see it. I'm going to talk for a little while, um, and you can put your questions on chat, as I said, and e Emily will feed them to me. So, as I don't need to tell you all that these are hard and trying times, that we as human beings have this, often have this false sense of control about our lives, and, and we get to make some choices that help us give us that control, but we're living in a time when we really don't um, like to... Uh, when we don't have control, when we, when we don't have a sense of how things are going, what's going to come next, uh, there's certainly fear uh, over, over the virus and what that means for us. I, I want to let you all know that uh, we've had 20 people uh, in our parish who have had the virus, um, and people of all ages, young, pe uh, young people in their 20s, um, and people uh, in their 40s and 50s, and some of it was very, very difficult. Uh, but I, and I need to let you know that we've had four parishioners who have died uh, of COVID-19. Um, and as we read, they're elderly and they had some pre-existing conditions, but uh, the virus has touched our very own community. Um, and so it's important that we continue to pray for healing and for the, the medical community and the scientists. Um, but somebody is... Thank you. Um, so, so many of us have, have a certain fear for our lives and for the lives of others, but I tell you that um, I thank God that you're praying for others and for the good of the world because it has an effect in the world. You know, we, I often talk about our mission and say, welcome, we're a church on a mission to know God in Jesus Christ and to make Christ known to others. Uh, and we are, and we're doing it in a very different way in this time. We're doing it through our worship uh, which I'm going to talk about a little bit, how we've been doing it. Uh, but to let you know that on one, on one service, we had people from 14 countries uh, participating in our worship. And how somebody from Indonesia got on our live stream, I have no idea. But um, it's certainly a change as, as we are reaching out uh, in a very different way um, to people in our community, but beyond the world, around the world. And you know, our theme for this year has been a community for the world. And I think, it, the, I think the idea when I thought God was giving it to us was to really build our community and reach out. Uh, but we've literally become a community for the world by the way that we are offering classes during the week, uh, by our Sunday morning offering on YouTube and Facebook and um, through, the, through the website. And, and I've been thinking how ironic it is that a community for the world, imagining we were going to come in, have pe more people come in physically, um, is, has turned us outward. I think the only other time that we picked a theme for the year and there was an irony was the year where the theme was fearless. And we talked all through the year about that uh, doubt is not the opposite of faith, but fear is. And that was the year of the Allen's plane crash. And so it's just funny how God, um, how you think you're on one track with God and God sometimes has a different uh, plan in mind. Um, we've also been, uh, we've also been a, a place of prayer that a lot of people are reaching out to us, uh, giving us names of people and conditions to pray for that are far outside our boundaries. Uh, and our feeding ministries uh, have really grown up. Uh, thanks to all of you who have been bringing in dry goods and food um, so that we can support the communities around St. Mary's and around um, St. James School and the feeding program at St. John's, which has become, uh, instead of us making casseroles, it's really become a ministry of, of money and a very small group of people 
led by Allison Hastings is preparing uh, like bag bag lunches, bag bag food for people, and and so we continue to we're continuing to feed people in that way. Uh, our giving has been strong, uh, and I give thanks for that for you all continuing to meet your commitments to God and to uh, St. David's, and I give thanks for that. I want to talk a little bit about our worship. Um, it, is, it has evolved, as you all know. It started live, and then uh, Mayor Kenny was having trouble with churches uh, not following the rules, and so he, he directed that only one person could be in, in a sanctuary at a time, and and so we, the bishop said, well, what's good for Philadelphia is good for the whole diocese. And that's when we made a real uh, jump to, um, I, th I mean, what I would call the iMovie. Um, we've, been, uh, we've been putting together, we've been filming the predominance of the church and special thanks to Jeff Chamberlain and John Lewis who have been uh, working the cameras and the sound. And then Shannon Garland and Lauren Machowski and Holly Vicky, who's our, music librarian had been uh, putting the service together and, and, and a lot of the the amazing pictures and things you see on some of the anthems and hymns are a result of Elaine Sonnenberg uh, going back into our library of hymns and then putting pictures in. So I thank God for younger people who uh, speak computer as a primary language um, and have been able to help us put the put the worship together on Sunday. So, I mean, the way it comes together is that we, we film the, right now we're filming the, um, the presiding part and the activities, as you saw today, that take place in the church. And then we've asked readers and prayers to, to record and send those in. And then, you know, by God's grace, we have five years of hymns that we can hear the congregation and the choir sing together, as well as a lot of anthems. And so we've been able to I think each week adds something new um, to how we go about doing our worship. And I, I give thanks to you all for uh, participating. I know in some sense it's easier. You can, as the Barber family says, we have jammies with Jesus. Um, and then other people are able from the comfort and, re and the comfort and love of their own homes to, um, to be able to participate in the worship. Um, the numbers have been good. Um, we are, it's, it's hard to judge and we've been very conservative and, and how, pe how we judge whether someone is actually in the worship. But our attendance is up or at least consistent. Um, we had that one weekend where uh, we hadn't downloaded the, the, from the cloud in time. And so we had to, to wait later, but that I think people went off on their days um, before they could worship with us. But otherwise, I think it's been great. Um, I have to admit, it's really hard for you all not to be there, to, to come in and either preside at the worship or preach to an empty room, uh, imagining that you all are there. But um, it's really difficult. And I would also say it's really hard to watch yourself. Um, I, I find myself cringing when I'm watching myself preach, thinking, well, you could have more energy there. You could have, why didn't you say it this way? But um, we'll be back together and I won't, I won't think about that as much, but it's, it's, been, really, it's been really wonderful um, that you all have made this adept switch with us to, to worship God together, even though we're apart from one another. I'd like us to add a couple of things um, going forward. Um, I would like to ask that you all, uh, during the piece uh, going forward, that you text people you know uh, the piece. Um, this is a, what, another way to remember that we are together. Um, my ev evangelist heart, um, knowing that lots of people are coming to church, maybe for the first time, would ask that you would think of your friends or co-workers. Um, and maybe at some time in the service, you might say, I'm in church and I'm thinking about you. And just leave it at that and then maybe follow up a couple of weeks later to invite them to participate in our worship because we're you know we're on this mission to know god ourselves but to also make uh make god known to other people so um it's an it i think you'll find and you know the peace will be fun but i think reaching out to friends and neighbors or co-workers uh it just might be the time in their life where they come to a 
a place where God, where they're more open to God, um, and you could be the, the doorway that leads them that way. Uh, next Sunday and going forward, um, we are going to have Zoom coffee hours, and by that I mean uh, we, we have upgraded our Zoom account uh, so that we can have up to 500 people, and uh, you can have breakout rooms. So my, our intention is beginning next Sunday that we'll have something like this um, with some questions, and then we'll let you get into breakout rooms of eight people so you can talk with one another, and then we'll come back together and share our learnings. But I think one of the real challenges uh, for all of us is that sense of uh, the lack of fellowship. And so my, my hope is that as we have these Zoom coffee hours that we can keep up with one another and see one another, um, as many of you probably are doing as you, as you move around your Zoom uh, to, see, to see who's there and to see people you love and know. So uh, I'll send something out again to remind you about texting the peace and about inviting people and about the coffee hour. Um, in terms of reopening, um, we are following the governor's guidelines uh, uh, for our safety um, that we are very, um, we, we want to be careful that, you know, our Lord is a Lord of life. And if that's inconvenient for us or we have to try a different way, then so be it. Um, but we are, we are making plans now. Uh, the diocese has given us a 27 page document for how we may reopen. Um, in some sense, it's not very helpful at the beginning in mid-June, uh, where we can allow 10 people into church, counting whoever's leading church. And I thought, you know, for those of you who have sent me Christmas presents, it's a really good opportunity to go to church. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we, it's going to be, it's going to be a slower start. We're going to continue to live stream and we're going to move it towards live um, more than the recording in the coming weeks, because I think the little feedback I've heard, and I'd appreciate you all giving feedback on the chat, the little I've heard is that the services seem more exciting when people are in the room, actually at the same time. And so we want to move back to that as quickly as we can. Um, the other thing, uh, our vestry and the commissions and staff are thinking and talking about how we come back together. Um, you know, the decision to cancel the fair uh, was a part of that as we tried to imagine uh, 4,000 people in the room, uh, in the, on the grounds, and all the work that goes into receiving uh, treasures and sharing those treasures, uh, you know, sorting them and then sharing them. It just was, it just didn't seem like a, a smart or loving thing to do. And so, um, you know, we're, we're talking about, you know, doing something different, you know, maybe a, a, an internal uh, auction, silent auction, some kind of armchair auction, then my hope as we see what, as we see what best practices are is that we might have, you know, a big parish picnic that day um, so that we can keep the string going. I was kind of bemoaning the fact that, you know, I'm going to go down in history as the rector who didn't hold the 168th fair in a row. Uh, and then God just laughed at me and said, well, you're not in charge. I am. So, um, well, but we're gonna, we want to do something to commemorate this great part of our mission and ministry. When we do open, we're going to keep live streaming, and there's going to be a number of services over the course of the day. Um, you know, we're sitting in that, you're reading all the things that I'm reading, and we're sitting in that zone where uh, it's still pretty red. And so I think there'll be limits to how many people can come into a service. And so our, my initial planning is we're going to have several services uh, during the day, maybe two at eight, two at nine, 15, two at 11, 30, one at five, and maybe the later services will be more family friendly. Um, it may be that we, as, the, as we're allowed to have more people in church, that we might have uh, a number of people in the chapel, a number of people in the fellowship hall, a number of people in the undercroft, and a few people in the Harrison room you know, all following along. Um, communion, at least the, there, there, in the bishop's document, there's a lot more questions than there are answers, but it's going to be a long time until we take communion in both kinds, until we can receive the cup. Um, so we will be receiving the bread and there's certain, uh, certain requirements. And as the weeks come, as the weeks go on, um, we have, uh, 
we'll be able to, to, to share more with you about how we'll actually be able to worship together. Um, I also hope to have some outdoor worship this summer uh, and in the fall in the fields uh, that we might have uh, maybe a late afternoon, early evening, bring your lawn chair and we'll have worship. Our former associate, uh, Matt Holcomb, who's rector of St. Michael's in Colorado Springs now, um, has bought an AM FM transmitter um, and, and is planning to have drive in church in a couple of weeks uh, where people just drive into the parking lot and he's going to broadcast on some AM or FM number. Um, so we might look at that. Uh, we have a wonderful vacation Bible school online uh, that we're, that we're going to have for the families. It's, uh, we've shelved the plan that we had and we will um, we'll be using vacation Bible school um, in a really exciting program that I know that Maria Leal and Liz Colton have uh, are really excited about. And so we will we'll take time, we'll take, you know, we'll still have that. Um, I want to talk about this as a time to grow. I'm always, I'm always interested in what God is doing and how God uses the circumstances of our lives to draw us closer. And while I don't, I don't believe that God, in a sense, has called, you know, has made the virus come, uh, God's always right there uh, looking for ways to help us grow. And one of the, you know, one of the seminal or most important scriptures to me is in the very end of Matthew, where Jesus says, go into the world and make disciples of all people, baptizing them, teaching them to obey all that I've commanded, and, and remember, I'm with you always to the ends of the earth. And I think sometimes clergy and churches um, lose track of that great commission, and we start getting more interested in how many people are showing up on Sundays, or how many people are doing this or that and physically there. And in this time when we're not, we can't be physically with one another, uh, it's an opportunity, I believe, that God has given the church with a capital C, you know, all, all Christian communities, to help people pay attention to their prayer lives, to help people read their Bibles, to help people uh, find opportunities to grow in their faith without merely coming to church on Sundays. I mean, the, the common worship is so important, and I don't believe that anyone can be a Christian on their own. But I'm looking at this time as a way for all of us uh, to grow in our faith, to pay attention to our physical strength, to pay attention to mental strength, but also to build up our spiritual lives so that God is more and more part of our lives. And to that end, in the coming weeks, we're going to be um, adding some content uh, to the website so that you and that um, electronic church that is now joined with us can know, can learn how to open your Bible and read it, uh, to where to start, how to open your prayer book and read it, um, how, to, how to practice uh, important disciplines of the Christian faith, which allow us to grow in our faith. So I encourage you to, uh, to look forward to that. And even before then, uh, I encourage you to uh, spend time with God. We all you know, these, is, as we all know, these are strange times, excuse me, but we all have time that some, even, even church on Sunday has saved a lot of us an hour. We don't have to spend a half hour getting ready or 15 minutes to get to church or home from church. And so we actually have some more time in our lives. And, and, and I would just encourage all of us uh, to see this time, uh, this loss of control, the pandemic, uh, the kind of the upheaval of our regular lives to be a time where we can pay more attention to God. Um, you know, even five or 10 minutes a day uh, will be life changing for you and for those around you. Um, there's, there are a lot of opportunities on the website now to join in Bible studies and, um, and activities from the Center for Spiritual Growth. Um, and those, you know, we have more participants, but I encourage you to, uh, to join in. It's a, uh, you know, we're all beginners, no matter how, how long we've been at this faith, uh, we're all beginners, and those are great places where you to, to begin a new or to begin a deeper walk with Christ. Um, I think that's it. And so I'm going to unmute Emily, wherever she is. There she is, to talk about, to list, to talk about some of the questions you all have. Sure, maybe 
Frank, you could talk a little bit more. Um, it looks like some people are, you know, really interested in the outdoor worship, yeah. both private questions and ones on the public. So if you could maybe. Sure. Talk about so that. one of the things that we're looking at is to, is to make a little outdoor worship space in the Arboretum. And for those of you who don't know where that is, when you cross the bridge, uh, that goes into the big fields where the auction tent is. Just to your right, there's this beautiful arboretum that parishioners have been taking care of for decades. And we're uh, talking about, um, we're making plans to make a small worship space there that in, in normal times would hold 20 or 25 people and also places for people uh, to come and to pray and to reflect on their own uh, with social distancing. In terms of coming together as uh, outside, you know, the summer's pretty nice around Pennsylvania, uh, I found. It's certainly, even though I miss the home state, Cindy Roach, uh, I miss Texas. Um, I would never invite you all to come outside on a hot July day. But my, my hope is that we can uh, set up uh, places where people can bring their lawn chairs and where we, where, you know, a, you know great, good parking. We have lots of parking and that we might have outdoor worship on some nice days where we would, um, we would have recorded music that we could hum along to, uh, where we would share uh, communion. Uh, but there's, you know, there's a power, there's a power when people come together in prayer. Jesus promises that when two or three are gathered together, he'll be in our midst. And so I'm imagining um, that as soon as we can, uh, to gather us together, to offer our prayers, to see one another even at a distance um, and to worship God. And not to mention my evangelist brain um, would be um, imagining that people would be seeing us out there um, worshiping God together. So, you know, as we figure out what the guidelines are, as we figure out, you know, how many people can come together in one place and when, uh, that we'll start doing some outdoor worship. Um, it's a little bit safer, uh, I think, and even if we have to offer several uh, worship times uh, on a given Sunday, uh, we'll, we'll do that. Is that helpful? I see. Now what, what, other what other questions do people have? You can either type them or if you have trouble with typing, it would be okay if you unmuted yourself for a second to, to ask Frank. Frank? Yes, sir. Okay, question, because I was, I was at the men's breakfast where we sp spoke with the bishop last week. Yeah. And I was under the impression from what he was saying that we were going to be architecturally driven as to how many people we were going to ultimately be allowed to have in the chapel. And I don't know, that seems like we could do that sooner rather than later. And right. the second question is, how is a fair, okay, having no fair, but having 500 people at a picnic probably any safer yeah i don't know john i i i, I don't oh. know what october is going to bring um but i'm hoping that we can do something and maybe it's you know that we have we set up times for it um the bishop was really clear and actually helpful for us in looking at the architecture uh in terms of how many people we might bring so if you can imagine in the church and i was one of the things I've been doing in my strange spiritual life is I've been worshiping in the old church uh, by myself every Sunday just to, you know, to make sure the prayers continue and uh, to pray for all of you all. And I'm looking around figuring, well, maybe you could fit 15 people in the church with social distancing. Uh, and so you need to offer several services. And when we, when we have some of the limitations taken off, then you probably fit 60 or 70 in the chapel. You could probably then at the same time have 40 or 50 in the fellowship hall and the same number in the undercroft and a smaller group in the Harrison room. So we could actually, when, when we're allowed to have more people, we can actually um, have more of us together on Sunday, even though we have to stay apart, we're gonna be wearing masks, no touching, lots of Perel. I, I mean, looking at the Bishop's guidelines, John, um, I don't know where we're gonna get all the Perel and cleaning stuff. Um, that his guidelines are suggesting, but we're gonna to need to clean the church in between every service. And so there'll be, you know, there'll be some time differences, but yes, we will, you know, we will be able to, to look at our architecture and figure it out. 
And as with all the dioceses, and I'm talking with priests all over the diocese each week, um, you know, we have to come up with a plan that the bishop, every bishop is saying, you must have a plan for this. And so we will, we're working on that right now, the staff and the commissions and uh, the vestry. And it's, there's just a lot of, as you all know, there's a lot of moving parts, but still, um, as soon as we can, we're going to be, we're going to be worshiping together. Thank you. And we have a greater God too, Governor Wolf, that, you know, intervenes too. No. <laughs> Yeah, I'm praying for that too. That would be nice. We've got, we've got another question um, from Craig uh, Laird asking, will we have to wait for a reliable vaccine to restart choir? Um, I think Claire and Elaine are on, so I don't know. Frank, if you want to start with that and then maybe Claire jump in because she's yeah. done a lot of reading on this. Yeah, there's a lot out there in the church world about, and there have been you know, articles you all probably seen that it's one thing to speak, it's another thing to sing or to yell in terms of uh, the potential of spreading the virus. And so a lot of a lot of people are commenting, they don't think we're going to be singing until we have a vaccine or a reliable way to deal with someone who gets COVID. And I see Claire uh, ready to go. So why don't I turn it over to the expert? Uh, thanks, Frank. I'm I feel far from an expert. I feel like every day I'm learning something new uh, about it. But what I've learned is that when um, the, the amount of droplets and aerosolization that happens when one sings is so much greater than regular speech, that it's, you know, we talk about six feet of distancing, but um, it's more like 20 feet, 25 feet need to be uh, between people. Uh, which is really impossible. And a choir cannot become a choir without being in the same room. I mean, we've seen wonderful virtual choir videos, um, but the satisfaction and the art for the choir member is completely lacking, um, even though they can be put together in a, in a technical situation um, very, very easily. So um, it, the choir directors all over the world, I think, are... Uh, lamenting right now the situation and uh, I do think that it will be it won't be until we are very certain about treating like as Frank just said treating the virus or vaccinating before we can put choir pe choir members in a room together to rehearse thank you and you know the other concern you know that we had that I have and I'm sure you all have as well is that you know, we have a lot of uh, older parishioners who we love very much, and it seems to be, the virus seems to be affecting the more mature population than it does um, the average population. So, you know, when Jesus says, love your neighbors yourself, we've got to, you know, we've got to love, you know, everyone, but, it, uh, and in this case, particularly those of us who are more mature. Right. And um, Elizabeth uh, Vandiver is asking about what kind of food is needed and welcome to be dropped off. I think, um, Frank, I don't know if you want to answer that or if Maurice wants to, wants to tackle that. I think Maurice is on as well here. Hi. Oh, there you are. Yes, good morning. Good um, morning. Great sermon. Thank you kindly. Happy Sunday. Um, so for food, um, most of it is um, canned kinds of goods or uh, non-perishables, maybe some pastas or some rice and things, um, things that might be able to, they're getting passed out, but things that might be able to sit around for a minute and no one has to worry about the heat or weather. Um, St. Mary's has come up with a wish list um, for food that we've thrown on the website. Um, you could either just order it straight off of Amazon and have it sent straight to them, or you can um, bring it into the church. Um, yeah. Yeah, thanks. And I would say, uh, in talking to people who are running the food pantries, a lot of people bring peanut butter, which is wonderful because it's such a good source of protein, but they forget the jelly. And so a couple of food pantries that I've been in contact with have asked me to remind people that if you buy peanut butter, please buy some jelly um, because, or honey, because, uh, it's a little thick on the tongue if you're just eating the peanut butter. But yeah, pasta, uh, spaghetti sauce, 
uh, things that won't perish. And Emily and Kate Farrow and um, the Kimmels and others are we're building up the gardens uh, right now. And the garden, the community gardens look fabulous with the hope that an expectation that we're going to share our bounty with um, some of these food pantries so that they can uh, have fresh produce. Um, and also to let you all know that part of our outreach grants uh, go to places like St. John's and St. Mary's. Uh, and I've received um, some monies from people to support these feeding programs as well. And they are buying meat. I mean, they're buying fruit and meat to augment the dry goods that we bring. But it'd be great if people just, you know, just remember, remember uh, our brothers and sisters who are in greater need. Um, you know, St. John's is feeding over 100 people uh, during the week, um, and our Wednesday, um, and St. Saint, Saint James Community is feeding probably 140 people uh, all week long, and St. Mary's has uh, maybe a smaller group of people uh, who come to their pantry, but it's, you know, we're talking about being involved with feeding uh, probably upwards of 300 people, um, so it, it's important that we all uh, share what we have, uh, that we've been given gifts by God and we share it. So thank you. Can I just put another little plug for the uh, the vegetable food pantry? So um, Emily, I guess has the instructions on what to do, but if you all have um, gardens at home and have extra produce once things start happening, you can bring it to um, the church and leave it at the porch. Um, we'll send something around later about what days that we will be taking them down to St. Mary's or other food pantries. And also if anyone is interested in driving and taking the produce, if you reach out to Emily, that would be great. Yes, and, and like um, we all heard about Victory Gardens in World War II, there's been um, some pretty cool articles and webinars about um, this being a moment for people again, um, people of faith to be doing vegetable gardening. Um, you could do it at church with the community one, or you can do it at home. And we definitely, as Kate said, we will be um, setting up something so that if you have your own vegetable garden at home and you have more than you need, that we'll be happy to be a collection point to then take it to the Ardmore Food Pantry or others um, that are sharing that produce with, with people. So. Yeah, I'm seeing Brian Vargo. I don't know what's happening at St. Augustine and Pippo, and we'll find out. Um, they've kind of been tucked since Andy Klein uh, became the vicar of St. John's in Norristown. I think it's been tucked underneath um, St. Augustine of Hippo, where we've been, especially our youth have been involved in a feeding program. Uh, I don't know, but I'll find out this week what's going on at St. Augustine of Hippo. And Julia Irwin's asking about what's going on with smaller parishes. Um, I sit on the board of trustees of the diocese and I'm on an ad hoc committee uh, that is giving out grants uh, to the smaller churches that um, we identified uh, that we could take additional monies out of the uh, the diocesan endowments, uh, and we have a fund of $800,000 uh, with a limit of $20,000 per, per parish or mission. And so we are receiving uh, requests from the smaller parishes um, for, for their help. Uh, they've actually, been in a, in a remarkable way, in, in terms of talking about God's goodness, um, a lot of them are doing very well. The people are continuing to pay their pledges um, because they have a smaller budget, they are uh, they they don't have the huge cash needs. But we've been giving out at this point. I think we've given out about one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars in grants to eight parishes, uh, and we're also helping them get their PPP loan because that's been a very effective uh, governmental program uh, to help people through this difficult time. And churches qualify for that. I jump in with a follow up, Frank, on the uh, food and, and what you just said. Uh, does the diocese have anything in place for channeling just pure financial assistance to people in addition to food? And you know, is there a way to like uh, earmark something if, if we wanted to send something to the church and have it get get to them if they need to buy medicine or you know something? Yeah, you could. Um, I mean, Jim, I'd be happy if you have one, a church in mind. I'd be happy to give you the the address of the priest so that you can. 
write it to their discretionary account that they could uh, they could use that money. I think you could also write it to the diocese. You could send a check to the diocese um, uh, for them to do that. I haven't really heard that need so much. I've been helping uh, two other clergy with their discretionary accounts because you know we have some unemployment in our parish as well and underemployment. Uh, but in some of the places in the Northeast where I have clergy friends, they have a lot more challenges than we have. So I've been, I've been sending money to their discretionary accounts so that they can help their parishioners. And and I'd yeah, be happy to do that if you sent it to me and tell that's me. That's exactly what, what I had in mind. What, you know, so we might not, none of us know which which church, but right. we could we could send something in and say, please forward this to the diocese to get into somebody's discretionary account because. Uh, as you said, you know, we've got uh, 40 million Americans unemployed out of 150 million. That's that's more than Great Depression numbers. And so I think in addition to the food, you know, we should be thinking about trying to get a couple bucks into people's pockets. Right. Because rent comes. You know, rent comes and people have needs. So, you know, and people have been very generous with me and I've, you know, I've been helping people around in our community within St. David's in our community, but also uh, because I think some of the needs are greater at, uh, in some of the places that have more poverty than we have uh, to do that. I just see Vincent Dixon says that they've St. Augustine has stopped the Sunday breakfast. Hmm. Frank, yeah, I saw Mark Fraser who runs it uh, yes. every Sunday last week. We went to St. John's and um, we're going to try to get it started. That's the only day of the week there isn't a breakfast at St. John's or a, a meal. Right. And possibly it'll be from St. John's because they're already set up to feed from the door. And it's the same community goes to St. John's. Yeah. Right. St. Right. So we should have information shortly. Good. Thank you very much, Vincent. Well... Well, thanks for coming out. Um, why don't we, why don't we close with the Lord's prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come. Thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Against us. And lead us not into not temptation. In temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Enjoy the day. Thank you. God bless you too. We'll see you next week. Coffee hour and, and worship. And uh, if anything comes up that you need, please reach out. Um, we're here. Um, well, I'm, not phys I'm physically here just because we have a law student finishing up and his girlfriend who's working for New York and a wife who's doing telemedicine. But um, we certainly, if something comes up or you need someone to talk with um, or you have some good ideas, we'd love to love to hear from you um, and look forward to the time when we can see you. So blessings, blessings of the day and the week. Thank love you, Frank. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.